Greetings, 18th century American colonists and modern day software developers. This is Wesley George Washington Chun from Google. In this video, we're going to demo the Gmail API with real code, but we'll also discuss early America, connecting you to past and present revolutions. When email was invented, rules were needed to govern access to it. Protocols were used to send, route, and receive email on the internet. Similarly, when the United States was created, the Founding Fathers had to craft rules for a new government, calling it the Articles of Confederation. However, neither those articles nor email protocols were able to keep up with the growth of a new country or advancements in email features and usage. Let's start with email. With internet protocols, developers work at the message level, sending and downloading them, whether for a web or a mobile app. The problem is that email has grown in ways that no one thought of. Features such as drafts, labels, and threads weren't even considered back in the early days, but now have become a crucial backbone to the email experience. Dealing only with messages doesn't work anymore, so that's why we created the Gmail API. Besides basic message management and granular access control, the API can process drafts, threads, labels, and folders, as well as perform admin functionality such as mass user migration, all without needing to write lower level code such as raw sockets with internet protocols. Google users also expect search, so the API's got that too. Check out the clip from the Gmail API launch video to get an idea of what kind of queries you can perform. All right, enough talk. Time to code. We'll reuse the same authorized API access code covered in an earlier episode, so check out that via the first link before continuing. If you're completely new to Google APIs, you should review the earlier episode found at the second link. We'll pause now to let you catch up before coming back to join me here. All caught up? Great. Now let's say I wanted to archive the busiest threads in my Gmail account that subscribe to many mailing lists. I'm curious about which big things happen to make everyone engage and reply. To kick off such a project, let's create a simple command line script that looks for threads with more than two messages in them and displays the subject line as well as the number of messages in those threads. Ready? Let's go to the computer. OK, ready to start coding? We'll do this demo in Python, but the purpose of the code is not necessarily to target just Python developers. As the Google API's client library is available for Java, JavaScript, .NET, Objective-C, PHP, Dart, Go, Node.js, and Ruby. So regardless of which language you use, the calls will be quite similar. Google's REST APIs are web-based, so they'll work with server-side apps, including command line scripts like the one we're building here. But calls for our native mobile libraries, such as for Android and iOS, when available, will also be named similarly. The bottom line is that if you're not a Python server-side dev, consider this as pseudocode to help guide you. All right, so after the standard Python imports on the first few lines, on line 5 is the scope for read-only access to Gmail. Yes, the API supports a variety of specific granular access, unlike internet email protocols. In this particular demo, we're only going to look at threads, so read-only is good enough. And the rest of the code that you see below here is the standard, common, authorized API access boilerplate that we covered in an earlier episode. So go back and review that video if you, uh, you know, need to go over it again. On line 13, we have something more specific. This is where we build the Gmail service endpoint by passing in Gmail and the API version, which is v1 that you see there. And then on the next line, we're going to call users.thread.list to get a user's threads. In particular, I want to get my threads, so that's where you see user ID is me. But if you want to do a query, a specific query, like you know all messages from a particular user with a subject line or with a label, that's where you enter it also on the same line here. But in this example, we're just going to get all threads, so we're going to pull this out right now. Once you're done, call execute. And when you get back a JSON payload, in, you know, it comes back as a Python dictionary, the thing we care about are all the threads, and that's uh, given the key threads here. For some reason, if you don't have any threads, you know, we're going to pass in, you know, hedge our bets and pass in an empty list just in case, because on the next few lines, you can see we're going to have a for loop that goes through every single thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for all threads that have at least three messages in that thread. So we're going to get you know, call the get method with a specific thread ID. And what we're going to do there is we're going to check, hey, how many messages are in this thread? because we really care about it. If you don't get enough, we're going to dump you. So line 17 makes the call to get. Line 18 you know, grabs the count of the number of messages. 
And then the next block of code, as you can probably guess, is going to start with an if statement that says, hey, if I don't have at least three messages, I'm going to drop you. And that's on line 20. Once we know there's at least three messages, we're going to go down into the first message, which is at index 0, you can see there. We're going to grab its payload, and we're going to take a look at the subject lines, because we only care about messages that have subject lines in them, or threads that have subject lines in them. So uh, we're just going to grab it from the first message. So let's set our default subject to empty first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through all of the headers in this message looking for a subject line. And if there is one, save it and break out of the loop. And then on the last two lines of code, we're going to check, hey, do I got a subject line? If so, print it. And also tell me how many messages are in this thread because that's what we care about. All right, looking good? Great. Let's give it a shot. All right, so here we go. Shouldn't take too long. As you can tell, this is the email address I use for a mailing list. And that's it. Isn't that awesome? Wow, the demo code filtered out threads with fewer than three messages. You could easily change that threshold to 50 or 100 should you be on very busy mailing lists. But wasn't that example nice and short? Before the Gmail API, I'd had to write lower level code including raw TCP sockets, logging into a server, and be intimately familiar with talking to an email protocol by sending and receiving strings. Using your favorite dev tools and talking to an API is one way that we can better adapt to developers' needs today. To find out more about the Gmail API, check out the docs via the first link. If you're an email sender, whether you use the API or not, strongly consider embedding markup in your messages to provide for a better user experience. The second link talks more about that. Finally, you can access other episodes in this and other series with the links down at the bottom. This is Wesley Chun from Google, and I'll see you next. No, wait! This is George Washington, and I didn't finish my story yet. So the Articles of Confederation didn't provide for what was needed. What was it replaced by? Well, Congress and other key stakeholders were pretty hard to come up with USA v2, called the Constitution. Now, it may not look like much, but trust me, it's way better than what we had before. v2 was launched in 1789 when I was elected president, and the rest is history. But wait! There's one more thing. The war ended in 1781, but I didn't get elected till 1789, so who led the country in those eight years in between? Well, the Articles of Confederation stipulated presidents elected for one-year terms, so the first president was actually John Hansen. I even wrote a letter congratulating him on his election. Yep, you can tell all your friends that I'm actually the ninth president. But since the Constitution became the current legitimate form of our government, I've got to dish out the tough love to my compatriot. Sorry, dude. Hope you learned something today. Thanks for tuning into this episode where we introduce you to the next revolution in programmatic email access as well as get a short American history lesson. George and John are now gone, but I'll see you on the next episode of the Launchpad Online. <laughs>